Hi everyone, welcome to Make It Wednesday. So this is the episode where I kind of choose what you're cooking for dinner, if you like. Because you know, Wednesdays we get stuck in a rut, we're like, what am I cooking for dinner? Well, you can come here, you can either watch now and cook this tomorrow, or you could save the video and we could cook it together when you've got all the ingredients. Anyway, what are we cooking today? We are cooking a creamy, spicy Korean style ramen and it's all gonna get done in like less than 15 minutes if I don't talk too much. So let's get going on that straight away. Now I think one of the keys to getting things done quickly at home for dinner is to prioritize your time. So as soon as you get home, put the water on while you're getting the kids ready or doing other stuff. We need to boil eggs, noodles, and some vegetable here. So getting the water started is a good way to get a head start. So I'm gonna put my eggs in here. Now a little trick here to get the yolks centered in the middle of your eggs, actually, don't do this where the egg breaks. Be a bit more gentle with your eggs. But if you pop them in gently and then just swirl them, that vortex in the water will make the egg yolks go into the center of the egg rather than like sticking to the outside. Just makes them a little more pretty. I think you can still do things in a hurry, but make them pretty. So I'm gonna set the timer here, six minutes for like a soft boil. One of the things I love about this episode is that I get to talk to you guys. So when this episode is released, I'm gonna be down there in the comments saying hello. So please do tell me where you're watching from. What are you doing? Is it morning? Is it nighttime? What recipes of mine have you cooked? What recipes would you like to see me cook? All of those things. So please do have a chat and I will come in there and, and we'll get chatting. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna do the, um, the broth next. So this is a kind of like cheats version of a tonkotsu ramen. Now use some store-bought chicken broth. And you know what? Like I'm so lowbrow when it comes to weeknight cooking. That is literally just chicken stock cubes that I've rehydrated with some hot water. Not even the fancy stuff in the bags or the Tetra packs or whatever. It's gonna get that heating up. And to give us that like creamy flavor and look, I'm gonna use some unsweetened soy milk. So this is my little trick for giving you that tonkotsu kind of vibe without the hours of simmering. So we're gonna let that come up to a boil. In the meantime, I'm gonna get some ingredients ready for my spicy pork, no pork, I'm doing chicken today. My spicy chicken topping. So it's got these lovely fresh ingredients here as well. And the reason I'm using mince is that you don't need to do any meat chopping. I find that saves a lot of time during the week. So I just need to chop a few aromatics though. I've got my ginger here. And we are filming this live cooking time so that you know that I'm not cheating with the amount of time that this takes for you to cook. And if you're cooking along with me right now, I hope you've got all your bits and pieces going. You should be up to the same stage as me. And I'm gonna take my little grater here, some ginger going. I love cooking with ginger and garlic during the week. I just feel like at the end of the day, I want something comforting and nourishing and ginger always gives me that kind of vibe. Got my garlic as well. Now, if you want an easy way to peel your garlic, you can just get a mortar and give those a light crush, and the skins just come right off. I love garlic, as I said, so I'm using quite a lot of garlic. You could obviously tone it down a little if you're you aren't quite the garlic fiend that I am. Okay, a couple more things to slice here. So that's gonna be for my pork. Pork, I keep saying pork. I'm doing chicken today. I do usually do this with pork at home. I think that's why I keep saying pork, but I wanted to use chicken because I think chicken mince is one of those things at the supermarket that's fairly cheap at the moment and probably a bit underused in recipes. So I wanted to use that one today instead of the pork. And then I've got some bok choy here. You could use broccolini. I just like to add some greens whenever I'm doing my weeknight dinner as well. Just thin them out a little. So just those bulbs, just slice them in half. If they're really thick, you could slice them into quarters as well. Oh, there's my eggs. Sound always freaks me out. I feel like, oh, I've got to wake up. <laughs> like it's the morning. Okay, let's get these out. I'm just gonna rinse them off actually in the sink to cool them down. See how well I've done on these eggs. You want them just like, still soft, but just set enough so you can peel them. 
Now I know I do have a lot of different ramen recipes on my channel. Why don't you let me know if you've cooked any below? Uh, I love to hear from you guys. I love it when you tell me what you've cooked of mine. So please do let me know. And again, please do say hello. And if you haven't subscribed actually, why not push that little subscribe button and the bell so that when I do another Make It Wednesday, uh, you will get notified. Or you could just think, oh, it's Wednesday. Maybe I'll check if Marion has a Make It Wednesday video. <laughs> Either way. All right, I'm gonna move this water over here and we can get started on our chicken topping. So I wanna get this heating up. Let's wait for that wok to heat up. Now, one of the things that I think is amazing about wok cooking, particularly when it comes to mince, is that in Western countries in particular, I don't find this so much when I'm living in Thailand, but I find the mince meat is like really watery. So that if you're cooking mince in a shallow, uh, deep kind of pan, you can often get a lot of just kind of like insipid liquid, making your whole stir fry very insipid. <laughs> so the great thing about a wok is that you can heat it up really high and the shape of the wok allows a lot of evaporation. So you've got a hot wok, you've got the mince hitting and then all of that steam and liquid kind of evaporates off which concentrates all the flavors. So I really do think choosing the right equipment when you're cooking makes a huge difference as well. So that's probably one of my other little cheats. I use my wok not even just for Asian, you know, stir fries at home. Like it's just one of my best friends, even just like beautiful seared broccoli with some olive oil and lemon juice. Anyway, it's always sitting on my bench top at home. So I love it, but there's always method to the madness. There's a reason for using it. Uh, now, oil here. The other key thing is to get your wok really hot. I don't know if you can quite see on the camera there, but there is some smoke coming off here. So I know that wok is really nice and hot chicken mince first because I want to give that a nice hard sear without like the garlic or the ginger burning. I'm going to leave the chicken mince to sear just on that first side a little and I think one of the things with wok cooking that people get I don't know misled about if you like in the movies or you know if you watch a chef cooking with a wok in uh, you know a Chinese restaurant the wok burners in those situations are really really hot so they can afford to like keep things moving around. It's like, you know, things are tossing in the air and there's flames. That just doesn't happen at home. So you have to give the ingredients time to heat up every time you add them. So at home, what cooking, you have to be a little bit more patient with. Now you can see because I've left that chicken there for a little while, we already have some nice color and you can see how dry that mince is. So I don't have a whole lot of liquid leaching out there. It's really quite, quite dry, which means I'm gonna get a nice concentrated kind of flavor. Okay, so at this point, my chicken is fairly evenly colored. I don't want a really hard sear here because I want the chicken to kind of melt down into my ramen when I put it on top. Do a little sprinkle of some spring onion in there as well. And now to give everything like a really beautiful, spicy, smoky kind of flavor and give it some nice color, I'm gonna use some gochujang. So Korean fermented chili paste, pretty readily available in most Asian supermarkets now. Well, actually Asian supermarkets and regular supermarkets. Mm, color is so nice already. Some soy sauce. All right, so this is smelling really amazing. If you are cooking along with me right now at home, why don't you tell me how you're going? Is everything looking good? I can give this a little taste now and just see if I want to add like any more gochujang, make it a bit spicier, or any more soy sauce. Oh no, ah, that's so good. Oh, I did put quite a lot of gochujang in there. That's got quite a nice kick to it. That's yum. That's our chicken topping done. Look, I said chicken instead of pork for once. Oh my goodness, okay. Okay, so we're nearly there. I don't know what the time is now, but I think we're less than 15 minutes, maybe, hopefully. Um, I'm gonna do some green chili here as well for a garnish. And just while we're waiting, I do have one more thing to do here. It's almost like a, a seasoning paste that you put in the bottom of the bowl so that when you pour the hot broth on top of it, it kind of like flavors that broth and gives you this really beautiful, fresh, spicy tahini kind of flavor. Now, what am I talking about here with the tahini? So I'm using a Chinese sesame paste. Now I know I said this is a recipe you could cook tonight without any special ingredients. This one, I actually keep to hand in my pantry. It's ground sesame paste, but you can just use peanut butter. So I'm sure you would probably have peanut butter in your cupboard, so you can use that or almond paste or almond butter or anything like that. I'm gonna use some chili crisp oil here. 
You just use plain chili oil as well if that's all you've got. Some vinegar as well. Now just one last little seasoning to add here, just some soy sauce, because I haven't put any salt into the stock that I've made. So we're just relying on the salt that's in the chicken stock. So I do want this mixture to be quite intense and salty. I'm actually using some instant ramen here because I often have this sitting in my cupboard, easy to keep on hand. Well, actually it's, you know, you often call these two minute noodles. I typically find that these take three minutes, but you keep an eye on it. I also like to save little sachets in the two minute noodle packet. Uh, this is like a little vegetable mix. You could, if you wanted to, add the flavoring sachet into your broth if you want to, but there's so much big flavor going on here with the pork and then the seasoning here and everything. I just don't think you really need it. So, and you're gonna see why this kind of all comes together in a minute. So this goes into the bottom of the bowl, kind of not ready for its Instagram close up right yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say what it looks like because that would not be conducive to getting hungry, would it? So <laughs> it will look pretty in the end, just wait. Now my noodles here are going to take their time, their three minutes. In the meantime, my fork here. Oh, chicken, thanks Sheree. <laughs> the editor would have been like, oh, she said it again. <laughs> I'll just pretend it's pork, that's fine. Pick in, there you go. Chalk. <laughs> okay, these noodles are nearly there, so I'm just gonna pop my bok choy in there. Bok choy is one of those vegetables you do not wanna overcook because then it goes from nice, bright, and crunchy to very quickly soggy and bland. You take, actually, my noodles out first. Pop those in, and then those greens as well. See how nice and bright that bok choy looks when you just do it right at the end here? Obviously, if you're uh, doing this for multiples, you just get a bigger pot, put all of them in at once and then divide them up. So this recipe does about four serves. So it is quite a lot. You can get, you know, a lot of this done very quickly. You know what I was thinking? What? I don't think I've ever seen you use bok choy before. I have used bok choy plenty of times. It's the only vegetable we can get in Noosa. The only Asian in the village. <laughs> <laughs> You guys might find this where you live, actually. I find it very hard to find a lot or, or like a big spectrum or variety of Asian vegetables. I love things like choy sum and gailan and kung kong, but I do find that here in Noosa in Australia, they're hard to get. So bok choy often becomes a replacement for any green vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now my chicken stock and soy is nice and warm, so I want to pour that into my bowl here. Now you can see some of that lovely, spicy, creamy stuff from the bottom is just coming up to the surface. I'm just going to give that a bit of a mix in the bottom here, and that'll give us such a lovely depth to that very quick broth that we made. And I can really smell that fresh like sesame paste here. And I think the reason why I put it in here and not in a stock is that if you leave it boiling in here for too long, you don't get that really lovely kind of like fresh hit of flavor. So there's always method to the madness. Okay, let's do the final bits. Some of my pork mixture. Oh, I've got my little sprinkles, my little vegetable sprinkles from the packet. My egg, a few of these chilies a little bit of spring onion as well. And I mean, that is a good looking ramen bowl to have made in, I don't know what the time is, but it's gotta be less than 20 minutes or 15 minutes with all the talking. <laughs> well, let me get in here and try this, make sure I've done a good job before you guys try it out on your Wednesday night, huh? Hmm, that broth is so creamy and savory and lovely. Ah, oh, I love that so much. It just tastes like it's been simmered for hours and it's just literally been a few minutes, so good. Well, I hope, before I get stuck in here into this bowl of noodles, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you come back and watch these Make It Wednesday recipes. I think they're a really great way to kind of get yourself out of a weekly cooking rut. I know sometimes I really need some inspiration, whether it's just like a different twist on a dish or like a new ingredient, like the Chinese sesame paste or something like that, um, can always inspire something new and delicious and make you feel like, you've you know cooked something really special on like a Wednesday night. So there you go. Let me know if you enjoyed this recipe, if you do make it, and I'm gonna get to eating my noodles. Bye.